Hey guys, it's Nihon Reboot. Today I wanted to talk about housing in Japan and what options you have as a student going abroad. Now, there are schools that do force students to either pick, homestay, or dorm. Now, my school was one of those. Um, though, I did fight with them quite a bit, and eventually they gave in and let me pick my own housing option, and I picked an apartment. Now, um, when choosing your housing in um, Japan, you need to see, obviously, what your school will allow and see if it is possible to push for an alternative, um, like I did, because it can save you money in the long run. Now, uh, there are four primary sources of um, housing when you go to Japan. The, th the first two, obviously, are the homestay and the dorm. Now, the homestay, um, how this generally works is you live with a Japanese family or... Um, Actually, you know what? I'm going to make this more general uh, for studying abroad in general. You pick a family of, you know, that native place. Now, when I applied um, and they presented me the homestay option, there was an option to pick your native family's English level. You can have them fluent in English, you know, somewhat okay, or you can have them have no English. Now, depending on your goal for your study abroad program, you can choose uh, that level. Now, if I would have went, I would have chose parents that didn't speak any Japanese. Because that, you know, my goal is to become fluent. And that's, um, I'm already able, I was already able to speak and converse on a regular basis in Japan prior to my arrival. So that would have been the best option. Now, for those who are just starting out in the language, maybe they want to pick somebody with a higher level of English. Um, to make their transition easier into the country. Now, the pros and cons of um, homestay are one, you get up more language exposure. Two, you get c more culture exposure. You see how the uh, family works. Three, uh, depending on the family and the program, they are often obligated to make you somewhere around two to three meals a day. Um, and that comes with your tuition payment. Um, four, um, again, is there a four? I don't know. I'll come back to that. Now, the cons, on the other hand, is one, like I said, with that tuition comes price. You know, homestay is generally one of the most expensive options for studying abroad. It usually is quite a bit. Um, so it might not always be a possible uh, scenario for people uh, who have a lower income in general or lower savings such as myself homestay wasn't really much of an option to begin with um, but I wouldn't have picked it anyway for the next couple of reasons two you don't know how strict or their like how their rules are you might not like it you know you might rub against each other the wrong way now someone like me I've been living by myself for about four years prior to coming down to Japan so automatically going over under someone else's roof and under their rules is something I wouldn't be able to adapt with very well because I'm so used to doing things on my my pace. Um, others who are used to it, they might like it. They might be okay with it. You know, um, I had friends when um, I had friends that already returned to America, and when they were studying abroad, they would always have to let their family know ahead of time if they were going to eat out like 24 hours in advance, which is kind of strict. Um, they had curfews, and overall, I didn't really like that. Um, I didn't really like the fact that you know they had to go home early, things like that. When they're there, they were adults. You know, they weren't young people; they were full-grown adults. Now there are other families that let them do whatever they want, so it's luck of the draw. Uh, third reason: if they cook for you, will you like their cooking? You know, if they make things that you don't like, if you have a very strict, picky diet, you might not want to do a homestay. You know, um, I am not a big fan of fish. I can eat tuna, um, but that's about the extent. Maybe maybe squid, you know. But, yeah, I, I, it's really difficult for me. I don't really eat much meat in general, uh, very little bit. So, um, with the exception of those, I am a generally open eater, and I've, I've increased drastically since living in Japan, my, my palate. But um, I wouldn't want to live under someone else's roof and eat their food when there's a high chance I wouldn't like it. Um, so those are some of the reasons of whether or not you would want to do a homestay. Next up is the dorm. 
this is generally the default option and it's a little bit cheaper now dorms they have the benefits of generally being closer to campus uh, homestay students is not re it's pretty common that they had to commute like an hour sometimes even two hours uh, while in the dorm it's maybe about you know a 10 minute walk um, yeah it's the closest it's close to school it's cheaper uh, but that's about the extent of it you know the cons of it are often you have to share a room with somebody which some people are used to I don't like sharing space because one um, apartments our dorms are generally smaller in general and let alone a Japanese dorm which is even smaller and uh, two you're dividing that space in half with somebody else just ain't worth it for me for me some people are okay with that um, also again there is a curfew uh, one of the dorms on my campus requires you to be back by 10 o'clock and if you didn't get there in time the gates will lock up and you're kinda screwed but again that dorm was also the cheapest option so people were like they're trying to outweigh their costs um, things like video game systems uh, buying furniture moving around furniture are forbidden in certain dorms however I've played Smash Brothers at plenty of dorms and the people there actually really don't enforce it but this varies from school to school now the final two options are ones that you generally have to do on your own because with the dorm and the homestay usually your school will arrange that for you and um, for the other two options which is a uh, apartment or a um, share house hostel um, yeah share house or a hostel you have to get your hands dirty and find this yourself now, the benefits of the apartment and the uh, share house are they are usually the cheapest options, and you generally get your own space. Now, uh, with the apartment, you get the whole apartment. With the share house, you get one room, and generally things like bathrooms and uh, kitchen, living space, um, those are usually shared. Um, the place, the apartment that I um, am staying at at the moment, it actually when you convert it to US dollars, it's somewhere around $250 a month. Um, it's a shoe house sized um, apartment. It's, it is pretty small, and it's good, but it's good for one person. And um, the kitchen is abysmally small. Um, did, I, did I ever do an apartment video? I recorded one. I gotta see if I can find it somewhere. Um, I'm currently in America right now. I did move out um, when my semester ended. But I am going back in a couple of months. I already have everything planned, purchased, and I have a job coming up. Uh, I just got to get my bachelor's degree, which is going to be in a couple of uh, months. So I'm going to be going back to the same place. Now, um, I lost my train of thought now. Anyways, so it's good for one person. Though it has, again, its, its pros and cons as well. There is a small space. And that's, that's generally really the only con, and depending on where it is, it could be far or close to campus, or far or close to your job, or wherever you're trying to go. And it can get lonely at times if you suck at making friends. I didn't have that problem, though, you know? I had a Wii U and Smash Brothers and Mario Kart. People always came. Now, if you want to um, already make friends, like, off the bat, you want to have a, a social group, you might want to choose a share house. Now, the share house, again, like I said, you share basically everything but the bedroom and because of that um, you're gonna have an inner group of people that you're gonna meet immediately and I, I lived in a share house when I was in or a hostel in Tokyo and that's where I met one of my friends who I still talk to quite uh, regularly even though he's um, he switches between Canada and Tokyo and now I switch between Florida and um, Osaka but we still talk to each other on a regular basis and uh, when I was down there I, I made a lot of friends and we were it was like day one of course the majority of them are gonna be foreigners you know it's not often that uh, Japanese people do pick hostels but it does happen um, I mainly hung out with Australians Canadians and um, people from China when I was in uh, Tokyo for two main reasons being that uh, one they were in the, they were my hostel area and um, Two, when I went to Tokyo, I didn't have I didn't go there for work or for uh, school. 
I just went there for three months um, to just do whatever I want. And when you don't have a school or a uh, work uh, social group, it's very hard to make friends. And also, I was only, I was pretty poor with my Japanese at that time, so um, yeah, it became a little bit of a problem. Now, so okay, going back to the main point, hostel or um, share house, great for making friends, also cheap. Apartment, good for making, uh, good for having your own quiet space, and also cheap as well. I think that the apartment is the best option overall, but it's going to be the hardest option generally because um, finding an apartment requires uh, some level of Japanese. I've had to make many phone calls in Japanese uh, through Skype, I bought Skype credit, and I talked to them and I told them about it, which is how I found my place. Now there are websites such as Gaijinpot, highly recommend it. Gaijin Pot uh, helped my, a couple of my friends find apartments, um, and also uh, Gaijin Pot generally has landlords that speak English, and that's where you can find those hostel um, share houses as well. So, um, uh, Gaijin Pot and websites similar, similar to that, I can't think of any off the top of my head, are the best ones for homestay, uh, or not homestay, are the best for apartments and share houses. Now, uh, so those are the uh, primary pros and cons of um, the four options being the apartment, homestay, dorm, and share house. If you have any questions about them, uh, let me know. Uh, I don't know too much about dorms, nor do I know much about homestays because I never volunteered, or ne not volunteered, I never chose those programs. Uh, but I have interacted and been inside them. And I can get you, um, I can get you some uh, information on them, based off personal experience. Now, again, my info may not be 100% accurate, um, but it worked for me. And yeah, just let me know if you have any questions. I'm more than happy to help you guys. Um, like I said, I've been through this um, process. I know how hard it can get. So I want to help those who also are looking to do the same feat. Now, my next video, what do I want my next video to be on? <sighs> you know what? I'm going to do one on the train system of Japan. The train system is definitely one that does take some time to get used to. But I do have some uh, tips that can uh, work out. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.